up, what up? I see I'm his squad. Welcome back, guys. Here's your boy Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, S and M Squad. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? We hope you guys are absolutely amazing. Yes, guys. Hey, if you're having a rough day, let's turn it around right now with some good music and some good energy, all right? So, my lovely wife, who we got today, babe? Who we all got? right, today we'll be reacting to Earlston Ford, Jesus okay. Never Fails. Amen to wow. that. That's facts. Jesus never fails. Never will. All right. Requested by Mark Quanis. We appreciate you, Mark Quanis, yes. for dropping this off. We're going to go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, guys. Pretty yes. long, so we're going to go ahead and jump straight into it. Here we go. Good energy, good music. Bam. Jesus never fails. felt that he had to do it all. The oldest child wasn't but eight years old, and the other one was under, under her. One evening when the young man came home, he, he went in the kitchen and he sat down to have a cup of coffee. And you know how it is in the country, when the sun is getting ready to go down, it's well, it's time to go to bed. There's nothing else to do anyway. He was sitting there drinking his coffee, looking out the window, and the sun was just about down. His wife walked in and asked him, say, honey, say, I know you told me once, but if you let me go to work, we could take care of some of these bills. He said, none such a thing. He said, when I married you, I promised you that I would take care of you. And when I went to the altar and said, I do, I promised God that I would take care of you. Well, she forgot it. And she said, well, anyway, when you finish your coffee, you come on in and go to bed because you know you got to get up in the morning and go to work. He said, okay. Well, with a smile on his face, he finished his coffee, washed the cup, went in the bedroom to retire. Well, anyway, when he laid down, he felt all right. But when the next morning came, the young lady jumped out of bed like she usually do, went in and washed up, went in the kitchen to fix him some breakfast. Oh, she got the coffee on and in the country, when you put that old coffee pot on, you can smell it for miles around. <laughs> <laughs> and she have a nerve to fix him hot bread from the top of the stove. Now, you don't find too many women these days fixing no hot bread for no breakfast in the morning. <laughs> well, anyway, when she got halfway finished, she went in the bedroom. And she shook him. She said, Jim, Jim, it's time to get up. And he didn't move. Well, anyway didn't worry about it because he had done that before. She went back to the kitchen to finish up the breakfast, the bacon and the eggs, and she put it on the dining room table. She went back for the last time to wake him up. She shook the bed. She said, Jim, it's time to get up. And he didn't move. Well, anyway, it felt like the whole world had came down on his shoulder because she felt that something was wrong. She looked towards heaven with tears in her eyes. She said, Father, don't tell me that he's gone. 
Yeah, he had gone. God had taken him right on through the night. What? Now she don't know what she's going to do. She never worked before in her life. She got five children. The oldest child is only eight years old. Oh, my Lord. The oldest little girl got up and came in the kitchen. She said, Mom, what is Dad doing in the bed? He's supposed to be at work. She told the child what had happened. And the little girl stood there with tears in her eyes. Well, anyway, after the funeral arrangement was over, they came back to the house and she sat in the kitchen where he used to sit and drinking a cup of coffee and the sun was just about down again. The little girl looked at her mother and said, Mom said, what are we going to do? Dad's gone now. She said, I don't know, child, but we're going to make it somehow. She said, but I tell you what, I wanted to go up the road to Miss Williams' house and tell her to come down here and talk to me a little bit. You know, when you have this kind of trouble, you need somebody to lean on for a little while. Amen. The oldest girl looked at her mother and said, yes, I will. She ran on up the country road with no shoes on and knocked on the door. First of all, let me tell you about Miss Williams. Miss Williams was one of them ladies that used to borrow her sugar, her pots and her pans, and a little bit of everything else. The little girl knocked on the door and she knocked with tears in her eyes, but Miss Williams wouldn't open that door. The little girl turned and walked away, but something told her to look back. When she looked back, she could see Miss William looking out the window. She went back to knock again. But Miss William wouldn't open that door. She didn't want no part of that trouble down the road. Oh, you can tell who your friends are when trouble comes. Uh, wow. The little girl went home with tears in her eyes and said, Mother, I knocked on the door, but Miss William wouldn't open the door. And she was home. She said, That's all right, child. You come on in. We want to make it. She said, sweetheart, go up the road and see if Miss Louise will come down and sit and talk to me for a while. Well, Miss Louise was another one of those women that this young lady's husband used to take her part of her rent when her rent was due to give her a helping hand. The little girl struck out and she ran up the road with tears in her eyes and she knocked on the door. And Miss Louise done the self same thing. But the little girl couldn't understand it all that her mother had done for her. She just couldn't understand. It. Wow. She went back home and she said, Mother, I just can't understand it. She said, Miss Louise wouldn't open the door either. She said, That's all right, sweetheart. We're going to make it somehow. She called the oldest little girl in the kitchen and they both got their heads together and said, Honey, Mother's going to have to go somewhere tomorrow and try to find a job. Because the food is just about out, and in two weeks the rent is due. I never worked before, but I gotta find something somewhere. Well, the next day the young lady got all dressed up, and I is in the country, and she went to town. Oh, she found a job all right, but it didn't pay much. But I always figured a half a loaf is better than none. Yeah. She came back Amen. home and told the oldest little child, she said, Mother got a job. But she looked at her pay that she had and she said, honey, this is thing gonna do. Mm. It was nowhere near what her husband had made. She said, mother needs two jobs. If I could just find me a second job, I think I could make it. One evening when she got off, she went up the road to old lady's house and she knocked on the door. She said, ma'am, I don't mean to bother you, but I got a slight problem. If you could just give me about two or three days work, I think I could make my ends meet. The old lady listened to her problem, said, well, child, I don't have much. She said, anything would do just to make a few bucks. She said, well, you can come by two or three days a week and wash some clothes or iron, and I'll pay you. Well, she accepted the old lady's job, and she thanked her so much. One evening when she got off the other job and went to the old lady's house, she stumbled and fell up on the step. The old lady came to the door and said, child, are you all right? She said, yes, ma'am, I am. She said, no, you don't look well. You better go see a doctor. Well, she took the old lady's advice. She went to see a doctor the next day. The doctor looked in the face and said, I don't know what you've been doing, but you don't look too well. You can have the rest of while. She said, Doc, if I rest, my little boy won't get no shoes. And God knows if I slow down, 
We won't get nothing to eat. Wow. In about two weeks, the rent is due. He said, I understand your problems, but I'm only giving you a doctor's advice. Now go home and rest a while. Well, she left there with tears in her eyes and she got back to the house and she said, honey, she said, mother gonna have to rest a while because I don't feel too well. The little girl looked at her mother and said, mom, if you take a rest, how are we gonna make it? She said, I don't know, child, but I'm tired. Well, late that night after the youngest kid was in bed, the mother had gone to bed. The oldest little girl went in the room and shut the door. And you know how it is in the country. They had them old oil lamps. She turned it all the way up, was smoking up one side. She got herself a little pencil and a piece of paper. She sat down there beside the lamp, and she looked towards heaven. She said, Heavenly Father, I'm only eight years old, and I don't know how to pray. Oh. But my grandmother told me if I ever needed you, just to call you up. And God knows I need you now. Yes. She put it on the paper. She said, Dear Heavenly Father, I want you to go into my brother's room there and take a look because he need a new pair of shoes. And she put it on the paper. She said, Dear God, don't forget me. Come by here. You, you can see I need a new dress. And she put it on the paper. She said, Dear Heavenly Father, go in my mother's bedroom. She lying there sick and I want you to touch her with your holy hand Woo. and make her well. Oh, dear God. Before you leave the house, please go by the way of the kitchen and open up the cupboard because our food is just about out. She said, dear Lord, it don't take too long coming back with the rent because if you do, we're going to be sitting out there on the road. Lord, dear. She said, and I thank you. That's my prayer. Yeah. She signed the letter. She sealed it up. She ran up the road to the old mailbox and threw it in. She ran back home and went to bed. I forgot all about your letter to Jesus. Next morning, the old postman ran up the road. He opened the mailbox, and the letter to Jesus was right on top. He said, now I wonder what fool would have put a letter to Jesus in the mailbox. Well, it ain't going nowhere. I'll put this one in my pocket. When he got back to the post office, he called a young man. He said, come here, let me show you something. Some fool had a nerve enough to put a letter to Jesus in the mailbox. He said, open it up. Let's see what it says. It ain't going nowhere, no way. The young man opened the little girl's letter, and they began to read. And they laughed until they cried. See, everything in the world is funny to you until trouble comes your way. Oh. The young man turned around, getting ready to throw the little girl's letter in the trash. When an old man walked out of the office, he was so old, the hair on the back of his hand had turned gray. He stumbled over to the young man and said, now I'd like to know what you two are laughing so much about. The young man gave the postmaster the letter and said, Master, I want you to read this. Somebody had the nerve to put a letter to Jesus in the mailbox. The old man trembled, he put his glasses on, he opened the little girl's letter and he began to read. And the tears began to fill his glasses. He said, wow. you two go back to work. I'll take care of this letter. And he put it in his pocket. Well, that evening when the old man got off, he got in his old car and he went to the old general store in the country and got two bags of groceries. He found out where the little girl lived. He walked up on the step and he knocked on the door. The little girl ran to the door and said, yes, the old man said, child, you don't know me, but I bought some groceries by for your mother and the children. She said, wow. oh, no, we can't take that from a stranger. He said, that's all right, honey, you take this food to your mother. The little girl with tears in her eyes thanked the old man and shut the door. She ran in the kitchen with the groceries. Then she went in the bedroom and said, mother, please get up. So some old man just came by and bought us something to eat. She said, did you thank him? I said, yes, ma'am, I did. Oh, about a half an hour later, three old ladies come stumbling down the old road. One old lady was so old, her knees was bent with a cane in her hand. The other two was holding up. Wow. They got to the little girl's door and they knocked. 
The little girl ran to the door and opened it up and said, yes. The old lady with the cane in her hand said, child, you don't know the three of us. But I bought some money by for your mother to pay the rent. The little girl cried and she laughed. She didn't understand it because she had forgotten the letter to Jesus. Wow. See, I got a friend here with some food. And I got another friend with some goodies for the little children. The little girl stood there. And she didn't know what to say and she thanked me. She said, but before you three leave the house, I'd like to know, how did you know about us? The old lady looked the girl in the face and said, child, when you live to get as old as we are, yeah. you always tell when someone's in need. Yes. Wow. She thanked them again, and she closed the door. She took the food to the kitchen and the goodies. She ran in the bedroom and said, mother, mother, please get up. Get up. Three old ladies just came by and bought us some money to pay the rent and some food and some goodies for the little ones. The mother sat up on side of the bed with tears in her eyes. Said, child, did you thank them? Said, yes, ma'am, I did. Oh, the mother looked towards heaven with tears in her eyes. The little girl and the rest of the children went over to the bedroom window and the sun was just about down. That's when Jesus walked right up to the window and she looked him right in the face and she began to sing. Jesus. Wow. Yes. Never fail. He'll never fail. Heaven and earth, Lord is going to pass up away. But Jesus. Yes. She said, Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Never. Wow. Wow. Amen to that. What a story. That is such an amazing story because God has proven his love for us on so many different occasions, each and every day. But Absolutely one particular did. event, well, one particular time, it really sticks out in my mind. When we first started out mm -hmm. and we had an apartment and we had an eviction notice. I remember that. And the people knocked on our door. The eviction, that. the date that we had on our eviction notice I remember that. was not the day <laughs> that the people came to evict us. We right. had the wrong date on yeah. the notice. So they came before that date that on the court document. Yep. And they say, you guys have until 1030 to pay your rent. And that check. There was a check <laughs> in the mail. Was at nine o'clock for five thousand dollars. You guys would not believe. It's like a miracle. Jesus never fails. He worked in mysterious ways. In mysterious ways. Absolutely. Now he might don't come when you call him, but he's always on time. A check out of nowhere. Always on for time. For five grand. Yes. Money yes. we didn't even know we were going to get. <laughs> we were trying to borrow the money and trying to scrape up the we money. We had two hours. We were panicking. Two hours. Um, Wow. Jesus like never fails. Absolutely. Never. Never fails. You can never count fails. On you can count on him. Most definitely. You know, all day long. That was amazing. I think this is like our second gospel song that we, you know, reacted to. All and um, right. this was an amazing story. Yes. Like, wow. Um, this the story the way it broke it is, down. And, it's um, just an example of give up. the love that God has for His children. Yes, He always comes through. Over he may not come when you want Him. When you want, but him. He is an on-time God. Right there on time. Never fails. Never fail, and you can count on Him. Most definitely. And um, wow, we're just so grateful. To be in this position. Yes. 
you know, to we be thank on this God. Thank you so much. So girl. if you're watching this video and you know, if you're going through a hard time, you know, just know don't that up. Jesus never fails. Yeah, Jesus never, never fails. Never fails. Never. never. Right? We're gonna go ahead and put that never one in the books. Bam! We enjoyed that one. Appreciate that, Mark Quantis. All right. All right, we're going to sign up out of here, guys. Y'all be safe out there. It's your boy, Sean. And your girl. Yes, yes, yes. Now. Bam. All right. Have an amazing day on purpose. Yes. God bless. God everyone. bless. Peace. Peace.